Hey, hey, hey. What's happening? How you doing, Peter? What's happening, y'all? What's happening? Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? I have two stories for y'all tonight. I am. I'm back, Jessica. How you doing, Jessica? I got two stories. I actually did come uh, find another story that I didn't want to go about. And the second story is going to be kind of quick, but it was interesting. It was definitely interesting. So, so we are going to get into it. I'm going to wait a few minutes for y'all to jump on up in here. Um, Greg, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. How you doing, Sabrina? Hello, hello, Space Olive. You back? It's good to see you. Thank you for the roses, Lala. I never caught your live. Oh, Jennifer, this is going to be your first live? Jennifer Butler, 76. If this is your first live, then get ready. Because tonight, if y'all missed, if you guys missed the live from uh, earlier, I'm going to go over this story again. And if you were here for the first live, I told you that when I come back, I was going to have a second story. I have a second story to go over with you guys as well. So tonight, you guys are going to be getting two different lot, two different stories. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And we're going to have a lot of fun together. How you doing, K uh, Katia? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? We got 300 of y'all up in here. What the rest? I'm going to give y'all just a couple minutes to go ahead and get your stuff because we, we got to get into it. We got to get into it. We got to get into it. And while we're doing that, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and um, get my drink ready. I feel like an alcoholic sometimes. But if you were here earlier, I had uh, I had Taylor Port. Now I'm drinking, what is this, coconut rum cream. This is freaking delicious. This is freaking delicious. So, yes. Seven Heaven, how you doing? You caught alive. Yes. I'm about to get started in uh, like two minutes. I'm just giving y'all a little time to get up in here. And we're going to go ahead and get into... Well, y'all listen to this. Wait, listen to this. Wait, wait. Y'all heard that? That poop. How you doing, Shay? Oh, uh, Sharp, Sharp Pierce from Baton Rouge. Hey, how you doing? Hold on. I'm about to show the bottle again. This is coconut cream rum, by the way. If y'all do not know, rum is my favorite drink. Oh, wait, where is it? This is what I'm drinking on. All right. Where y'all from right now? I'm gonna get started in like one minute. Where y'all from? I'll give you my food stamp card from one of your drinks. <laughs> I see Georgia, Chicago, Philly, uh, what's it? Oh, goodness. Hanover, Pennsylvania, uh, South Carolina, Arkansas, Oklahoma. I see Mandy, Mississippi. I see California, New York, Louisiana, Miami, Texas, Dallas, North Carolina, uh, Colorado, Nikki from Dallas. It's Coffee Baby from Texas, La from Dallas, Texas. A uh, Gator Girl from Florida. I never would have guessed it. <laughs> I see Florida, Hurst, Pennsylvania, New York. Y'all all over the place. All right. All right, you guys. It is 7.05. I'm about to go ahead and get started. Oh, before I get started, I also have to ask you guys. You know, Y'all know I ask y'all two questions every time I get on here. What are y'all drinking? Do y'all have y'all's drinks? Do y'all have y'all's drinks? What are y'all drink? Water, ginger ale, good. I also have a bottle of water here, and you see it's cold. I just took it out the refrigerator. Ginger ale, water, good. I don't see no alcohol, and it's great because it's almost, it's like 9 o'clock. You shouldn't be drinking. Root beer, ginger ale, water, douce, tea, tequila, Cayman Jack, Ray and Nephew. I have never heard of it. Oh, Kool-Aid, Dr. Pepper and water. Okay, whiskey and lemonade. Okay, good. Look, Lenozzle. 
Luna Zell, Luna Zoo. I never heard of it. Never heard of it. Seven Heaven said, all the kids asleep. It's me time. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Ten ball. Y'all drinking stuff I ain't never heard of. I don't know what the hell y'all getting this stuff from. But all right. It is now 707. So let's go ahead and get into today's story. So if you guys were here for earlier, if you guys were here for the earlier story, then you, you're going to be familiar with this. But if you were not here for the earlier story, today's story is a little messy. Okay? The main story, which is going to be what we're talking about here, it's a little messy. So let's just go ahead and get into it. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. All right. So today we're talking about this right here. Oh, goodness. Is Mark Latunsky. Can you guys see him? Do y'all see him? Y'all see this picture right here? Yes. Yes. All right. Awesome. 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 I'm seeing the yes has come through. This is Mark Latunsky. All right. So Mark's story is pretty interesting. So the people, all the people that we're talking about in this story are. Hey, girl. So, you know, fun, fun stuff. So, Mark Latunsky, he was actually married. His husband's name was Jamie Arnold. I am going to do a YouTube video. Just letting you guys know, I am going to do a YouTube video. So, about this case. This case was actually originally supposed to be a YouTube video for today. And I was originally going to do another video for today, but the week kind of, I got caught up and I wasn't able to get to the YouTube video. So that's the reason I'm doing this for today. But there is a little more information that I want to tell you guys and some videos and things that I want to show you. So I don't want to do a YouTube video, so don't worry. But he was married to this dude. His name was Jamie Arnold. Now, he, Jamie and Mark, their relationship was kind of, it was on the rocks. So now... Mark was into like dominatrix, like bondage, s and m type stuff. Like he was wearing, y'all know the people that wear like those leather straps. They're like leather straps and leather skirts or drip, uh, uh, kilts. They call them leather kilts or whatever them things are with leather boots and, you know, black leather and stuff like that. Like the alpha male stuff, I guess. That's the kind of stuff that he was into. And I'm not sure if Jamie himself was into it, but Jamie, Jamie did not like Mark. I mean, their relationship was good at first, but near the end, Mark was a little whore. So Jamie actually went on to explain that there would be times that he'd come home, Mark would have different dudes in his bed, hunching, blowing backs. I mean, the man was going at it. And, you know, Jamie was like, you know, Nigga, why you got these people in my house? Like we're married. We're not they're not dating. He and Jamie were husbands. They were married. Ring on a finger. But they've only been married for a few years. But Mark didn't give a damn. So Mark was doing whatever he wanted to. Now, one of the last times that the one of the last times before Jamie actually left, Jamie came home from work. He walked into the house. This dude, Mark, Jamie's husband was in the bed with multiple men. I'm not sure how many, but it was more than one. And they was doing their freaky deaky. They was getting it on. They was just doing all type of stuff. And you know what Mark said? It's, he didn't say, he was like, you know, he didn't ask me like, oh, I'm sorry. It was a mistake, which he, I mean, having sex is not a mistake, but you know what I'm saying. He sat there and said, you want to join? You want some sausage? Now, granted, so not granted, so Jamie was like, the fuck, what do you mean? Well, what do you mean do I want to join? Join you cheating on me in our bed? So Jamie eventually left. So in September of 2019, so I want y'all to know these events that I'm going to go over, it's like boom, boom, boom. So September of 2019, Jamie left uh, Mark. He just packed his stuff up and dipped because the man kept cheating on him. Now, I, you see in this picture here, uh, Mark is giving off, uh, 
what was that? Uh, Duck Dynasty vibes. You know, he got the long, scraggly beard and stuff. Now, the reason why I wanted to do the YouTube video because I do want to show out some other pictures of him. And if you guys Google pictures of Mark, a lot of those pictures, you will see the leather stuff that I'm talking about because he, he wasn't shy about taking pictures, you know, with the, the, the straps and things of that nature. Like, he wasn't shy. So, you can Google it. It's out there. But there were some pictures where he was more cleaned up. The beard was shorter. I think him and his husband, Jamie, was in one of those pictures. And they was uh, maybe at a gay club. I'm not sure. But he was dressed like a pilot. And his, and Jamie, oh, thank you, Monica, for those roses. And thank y'all for the likes, by the way. I appreciate the likes and all this stuff. And it, it really does help me. So I do appreciate you guys. But uh, he he and Jamie were, I want to say, the gay club. Because he was wearing like a, a, a pilot uniform. And Jamie was wearing like this black leather something something going on i don't know i don't know and you know it is what it is you know whatever whatever but that's the kind of stuff that mark was into and so now mark after jamie left you know mark he was like oh i'm a free man now i'm gonna do what he do he did not slow down one little bit and so now we're gonna get into the boom 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 of this story okay so, Jamie left in September of 2019. The next month in October, there was this dude named James Carlson. Now, James Carlson, he met Mark. I'm not sure how he met him. Reported. What do y'all mean reported? I don't get it. Now, I'm seeing a couple people on here saying reported. I don't know what that means. But anyway. Oh, okay, okay. I got y'all. I got y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm double taking. But anyway. So anyway, so in October of 2019, after, uh, you know, everything is going, there's this dude. His name is James Carlson. Now, I don't know how James Carlson met Mark. I'm not sure if it was over like a website or at an app or at a club. I don't know. But somehow he got connected with Mark. Now, James was also into the bondage stuff going on. You know the s and black leather, hurt me daddy type stuff. Now, here's the thing. Like I told them in my earlier my earlier live that I did today, you know, everybody has their own kink. So this is not a kink chain. If you like it, you like it. You know, I'm not into I, I can't do pain. You you pinch me and I'm like, what the fuck? Like I, I don't do that. But there are people that like wax and and levels and the, the whips. Hell, if Rihanna can, you know, chains and whips excite Rihanna. And our ancestors been put through crap for 400 years. You are entitled to like what you like too. So do what you do. This is not a kink shame. But they were into this stuff, right? So after, after James met up with Mark, he came over to Mark's house. You know, they were kind of, I guess they were drinking. I read somewhere there was some involved, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure. That is debatable. Because I only saw that in like one place. Most of the uh, articles that you read said it was just drinks. You know, and there's nothing wrong with drinks. I mean, I don't condone anything else. But this isn't a shaming place. Y'all know I don't. You do whatever, whatever, whatever. Anyway, so anyway. So while he was over there, they get down there and Mark is over there talking to James. He's like, hey, James, come down here. I want to show you something, you know. Come down, I guess it's like a, you know, people have like what they call sex dungeons or whatever. So he's like, come, I got to show you something. It's in my basement. So <laughs> James follows Mark down to the basement. I got to bring this thing closer because I don't, I can't scoot up. Wait. They get down to the basement. Mark handcuffs. James in the doggone basement. 
And once he handcuffs, he starts torturing the dude. Now, I'm not sure what those tortures include. I'm not sure of tor what type of tortures that they did to this guy, what he did to this guy. But it was said that he was down there against his will and he was being hurt. Now, also, he was down there, according to the articles that I read, he was down there for days. Days! Handcuffed in a basement. In Mark's basement. So now, you got this dude, he's trapped in the basement, and, you know, Mark is doing all type of horrible things to him. We, now, we don't know if it was, I can't say, I don't know, BDSM. I, I can't tell you all the stuff that was going on with that. Maybe he liked some of it. Who knows? But at some point, it became very clear to James that he got to get the hell out of this damn basement. I... There was nothing that said exactly how, but at some point in time, James finally was able to escape this damn basement. So he gets out the basement and he starts running down the road. And I actually told this a little, um, I actually kind of messed up on this little part on the earlier live. So I'm glad I was able to come back to it. But when he gets down the road earlier, I said that he, the police came across him, but actually he called the police and I have that phone call. I can't play the phone call for you right now, but there's a phone call. He's on the phone with the police, and he's telling the police, this dude had me trapped in the basement. Mark is following him down the road. Mark is looking for him, but he's on the phone with the police call. The James on the phone with the police. This dude had me trapped in the basement. Like, I, can, I need the police to come get this creepy guy. Had me a handcuffed down there. Come get me. Come help me. The police come, and the police get involved, y'all. They find the dude. They find Mark. No charges filed. No charges filed. Do y'all understand what I'm telling you? He's literally on the phone. There's and I, I'm when I do the YouTube video, you're going to hear the phone call. So look, keep an eye out for that. But he's literally on the phone telling the police the dude had him handcuffed in the basement and would not let him leave. He's been trapped in the basement. Thank you for that hat. No cap. But he's like, I've been trapped in the basement. Like, and they didn't file any charges. So obviously he is pissed. This happened in October. Remember, uh, Jamie had left him. Jamie, his husband, left him in September. James is trapped in the basement in October. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, Amazing, for the fire and the uh, TikTok things. I appreciate that. Uh, so now, nothing happened for that. Let's keep on moving. November, the next month. Now, this victim here has remained unnamed. I'm not sure if he's unnamed because he's a minor, and I'm not, or maybe he just didn't want this name to be out. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was down low i have no idea but his name is not in you cannot find this man's name but the very next month there is this dude now we have to go to the neighbor his name was michael parks he's latumsky's neighbor i'm not sure if he's a next door neighbor or if he's right down the street but he lives very close to this guy he's in his house minding his business i have no idea what he was doing in his house and while he was in his house boom 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 the door is beating and it's a loud beating and so he's like, what the fuck? So he goes to the door, he opens the door, and there's this dude, this unnamed dude that I just told you about. This unnamed dude is sitting outside of his door. He's covered in blood. Now, I'm not sure exactly how covered is covered, but it was it was very descriptive. It said that he, he had a lot of blood on him. This dude is covered in bodily fluids. And he's sitting there, and he's screaming. He's begging him, like, help me keep him away. He's like, keep this man away from me. And now, the neighbor, Michael, is saying, like, what the hell are you talking about? And while this dude is on his front door begging, you know, pleading for help, a car pulls into his driveway. Michael, who's the neighbor, Michael looks out. The car pulls up and out steps Mark Latunsky. Now, Mark... Remember when I said the stuff that Mark has on? Mark, at this point in time, when he steps out of the car, he's wearing his leather straps. He's described as leather belts, but they were like leather straps on. 
He had no shirt on. He had on a leather skirt that I guess Dominatrix S and M people wear. But he had on like the the leather skirt type deal. He had on the leather straps. He had no shirt on. His beard, which you guys see his beard, you see how long it is? He said that his beard was braided into two braids. So, you know, he had that thing braided up. And he stepped out of the car. He's like, what's going on? Like, what's happening, bro? Like, yeah. You know? So, Michael ain't going for it because this boy is literally in front of him screaming, keep him away from me. This man, you know, he's, he's trying to kill me. So, Michael calls the police. The police come. They get involved. No charges filed, y'all. The police are sitting there. I guess I, um, I can only assume they were like, oh, you know, just gay people being gay. You know? Gay people, they do this type of stuff. Now, it will go on to uh, later go on to that the family of the unnamed person. And actually, the, well, the family spoke out, but the family of the other guy, uh, James Carson, the one, the original one, the first one that was tied up, his family actually went after because they were like, if it was a woman that had done this, the police would have been more involved. But they were like, because they're gay men, the police were just like, eh, you know what this remind me of? Jeffrey Dahmer. You remember when Jeffrey Dahmer... When he, and that dude was outside and he was laid out and the women were sitting there trying to tell the police and the police were like, nah, they're gay. Let them do. It was the exact same thing. Literally the exact same thing. So the police were like, you know, whatever. There was no child um, foul charges. No charges filed. And y'all, this is the second person that has told the police that they were chained up in this man's basement. The second person how do you not file charges with two people are tied up in your basement? Whatever. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, we're about to get into the main part. Almost the main part. We're about to get into the main character. Thank y'all for the... Thank you, Auntie, for the uh, roses. I appreciate those. And thank y'all for continuously liking this. I do like that. I do... Well, not like it. I appreciate it. I do like it, too. But I appreciate it. All right. Do y'all see this guy here? First off, we're he's a victim. We are not we're not doing it. I don't want to see no I don't want to I don't want to read nothing. I know my audience. And in another world, I, I just Thank you for the cap. This is this is Kevin Bacon. <laughs> you knew my thoughts. No, we're not going to hell, not on this live. But this is the victim. Okay? Kevin Bacon. And you know, there is actually a, a real person named Kevin Bacon who uh, we, he, he comes into this story as well. But y'all, anyway, so Kevin Bacon, he met up, well, he met Mark. Thank you, Ashka, for the roses. He met Mark on what the news relayed as a dating app. And I was thinking, oh, a dating app, until they said it was Grinder. Now, you really don't have to know much about much, but to know that that ain't really a dating app, you get you get on there to hook up. So, yeah, it was it was Grinder. So he met him on Grinder. And they, I'm going to actually enlarge this. I'm going to break it down just a little bit so y'all can see it. So y'all can all see my face here. So, yeah. So, uh, Kevin Bacon, and that's his real name, Kevin Bacon. He met Mark on Grinder. So, Kevin and Mark, they're on Grinder, And Mark is telling Kevin, you like, like, yeah. You know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but chains and whips excite me. And... Kevin was apparently into it. He had some dark thoughts as well. Well, when they say dark in the news, I don't think it's like dark like I want to kill people. I think it was actually just like, you know, tie me up, daddy. I think it was that type of dark. But you know how the news, how the news does stuff. So, yeah. 
So they were talking on Grinder, talking about the stuff that they wanted to do, and he was talking about the stuff that he wanted to do the, uh, to Kevin over here. And Kevin was like, sure, I'll let you tie me up. I'll let you, you know, use the whip. I don't know. The, with the cool whip. Like, I, whatever they, they talked about on there. So on Christmas Eve, December the 24th of 2019, which, well, let me see. On December the 24th, 2019, Kevin Bacon and Mark Latonsky, they had uh, an arrangement that they were going to meet up. Now, Mark stayed a little over 20 miles away from Kevin. And so Mark was going to drive over to Kevin's house. Mark had a roommate. Her name was Michelle. So Michelle noted that, you know, he left the house around like uh, five ish, I believe, is when he left, uh, heading out the door. There is a ring doorbell footage, which, once again, on the the YouTube video that I am going to do, I am going to show you guys this footage. So you guys want to see a bigger picture of what I'm talking about on the YouTube video, which I am going to release later this week. So keep your eyes open. There. I'll let you guys know. But he leaves the house. He tells her like, hey, yeah, there's this 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 hot, sexy man that I'm going to meet up with. He was talking about Mark. Maybe he had a daddy fetish. You know, that's a thing. You know, people like People that remind him of their dad. I don't know. I need to look at a picture of his dad. Because I did see a picture of his dad. But I don't remember how he looked like. But anyway. He was like. I'm going to meet up with this guy here. And we're going to. We're going to do some stuff. And he told his uh, roommate Michelle. He also told uh, at least one family member. Because the news did relay it as he, family and friends knew that he was meeting up. So uh, Michelle and at least one family member. Who that family member was. I do not know. But he went up to meet with his, you know, with his daddy over here. Now, when he got to, Mark, he left the house around five. I'm not going to tell you what happened when he got there just yet. The next day, which was Christmas, December the 25th of 2019. It's family time. It's family time. So the family, they're having like this brunch or dinner or breakfast or whatever. But they're having this, this time to eat together that everybody knew that they were supposed to be there now when mark not mark with uh kevin kevin bacon here kevin's not answering his phone that day you know the first phone call eh, maybe second phone call eh, maybe then he misses the 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 blanca elena yes this story again and i'm doing another story when i get done so just sit tight we, we got something going he was supposed to be meeting up with him to eat so after, you know, he wasn't showing up around like 6 o'clock, the family started getting worried. And that's when they called the police. The police, they started their investigation and, you know, where the hell's going on? It didn't take long for them to realize that he actually left on December the 24th to go meet up with this guy that he, you know, was talking to on Grinder Because he told his friend Michelle, who is his roommate, and he told uh, one of the family members, which one of y'all had listed that it was his sister that he told. So maybe that's what it was. But he told, you know, they told him like, yeah, he was going to hook up with some man that he met on this, on his app. And so it didn't take the police long to lead them to Mark Latonsky's house. Okay. Now, before they actually, because I skipped over this on the first um, video. But before they actually got to Mark Latunsky, they did find uh, Kevin's car. His vehicle was like in this area, and it was actually just a few miles away from his original home. So they found his vehicle, and then when they talked to you know Michelle, and she was like, "Yeah, he was going to you know meet up." That's when they led him to Mark Latunsky. Now we are about to talk about the area. And if I didn't warn y'all at the beginning, which I didn't do it this time, this story is it's a little, the, the scene is a little graphic. This story deals with a little bit of cannibalism. Um, if you are not interested in hearing about cannibalism, if you're not interested in hearing me describe what was inside the house, this is your time to jump off the live. However, if you're like me and you're like, oh, take a sip and let's go ahead and jump into it. Cause it's about to get a little gra it's about to get a little graphic, okay? Take a sip. One count of three. One, two, three. Ah. 
Sweet is obsession. That is not milk. That is uh, coconut rum. Ooh. So anyway. Now let's talk about what happened when the police got into the house. The police show up at Mark Latunsky's house, right? I got to get in a little closer. The police show up at Mark Latunsky's house. They go in, knock on the door, knock, 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 knock. Mark answers the door, and surprisingly enough, he didn't even, you know, tell them, no, get a warrant or anything like that. He was like, no, nah, y'all can just come on in. So the police, they get up inside the house. They walk through the house. They looking around. They don't really notice anything really off the bat. They don't really notice anything, you know, crazy off the bat. They go down to the basement. Once they get into the basement, they go down, they look up, that's where they find uh, Kevin. Kevin has been tied up by his legs, so he's hanging from the rafters in the basement, hanging upside down. Not only that, Mark had gotten a sharp object and from here to here, so all of the body fluids had been drained out of Kevin. He's sit, hanging from the rafters upside down by his feet. Now, police are looking at him. Now, they notice something right off the bat. Not only is has this happened, there's also a puncture wound in, um, in Kevin's back. So, if you hadn't already guessed it, he's dead. But they also look and they're like, yo, dude, what is man's nuts at? Where's his nuts? So they turn to they turn to Mark and they're like, Mark, where are his testicles? Mark! Mark! And I'm not laughing, it's the alcohol. Mark had chopped off the testicles, removed them. He fried them and he ate them. He ate his nuts. Y'all know when he was going over there. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you ever gone through a season of swallowing? He swallowed his nuts and not in a good way. Not in a good way at all. Yo. I don't know. I don't know if he seasoned them. I see somebody asking, did he season them? I don't know if he seasoned his nuts, but he ate them. He ate them. And so then the police are like, what the fuck? Like, what are you talking about? You ate his nuts. Turn. And they're like, what are you, what were you planning on doing with the rest of them? You guys. So he had planned Mark Latunsky. If y'all just popping in, Mark had planned on removing his bones or removing Kevin Bacon's bones. And he was planning on making bone broth to fertilize his plants outside. Which I'm trying to figure out, like, I know you can make bone broth out of, like, chicken. Like, you make bone, you know, like, get chicken bones and boil them and you can use, like, chicken broth or bone broth or whatever. What do you mean fertilize your plants? You wouldn't even eat it? What kind of sicko behavior is this? So, yeah, he was planning on taking out his bones to make bone broth. But, y'all, also, he was planning on... Taking off his muscles, dehydrating them, and eating them as jerky, as beef, well, not beef, human jerky. Do you know how sick you have to be to do that? You know how sick you have to be to do that? And this is not them guesstimating, y'all. He literally... He didn't even try to hide it. You know, like I said, when the police showed up, he just let the police in the house. He didn't even tell them to get a warrant. He was like, yeah, come on in. And so when they asked him, he told them, he was like, yeah, I was, I ate his nuts. And not in a good way. Not in a good way at all. I fried them up. I ate them. And, and I was planning on eating his muscles as beef jerky. Also, which I'm going to go over more of this particular information when I do the YouTube video. And I actually did not go over this information in the first live because it slipped my mind. But also, 
later on, well after a couple months after um, the this had gone down, there was someone else who actually bought the house. Everything was still inside the house, including the dishwasher. The dishwasher was a brand new dishwasher that he never used. It wasn't even hooked up. Like the water was hooked up, but the electricity was never hooked up to the dishwasher. And so the person that bought the house after this, the person that bought the house after this happened, when they were cleaning up the dishwasher, there was plates in the dishwasher that had human remains on it. Plates with an S. So I'm trying to figure out, dude, if you ate nuts, what do you need plates for? Because they, they literally said it was plates. So I'm trying to figure out, did he, because remember, he was planning on dehydrating and eating um, Kevin as like jerky. So did he actually do some of it? Did he eat some more of them? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And y'all imagine if Kevin had not told his uh, roommate and the uh, his, uh, apparently his sister that he was going to meet up with him. They may not have ever known that he was going to be over there. He could have, Mark could have eaten Kevin and left no evidence and gotten away with it. He could have literally just got away with it, y'all. Y'all know how crazy that is? Like, for real, for real. And so now, you know, they got them. They got them. They're like, okay, you nasty, but we got you. So now they're going to court. They're in court, right? And their defense was, uh, what they call it when you're crazy, insanity. Their defense was insanity, which honestly, honestly, I probably would have gave them insanity. I, I Knowing, I mean, because you, do y'all know how crazy you got to be, first of all, to eat somebody, but secondly, to eat the nuts? I mean, not even a, a, a leg, not a, not a hand. You want to go straight for the nuts? But also remember, I don't know what else the man ate because, it, it, you know, there were plates in the dishwasher that had human remains on it. So apparently he ate more than the nuts, but I don't know. I don't know. But he originally he had uh, he went in for insanity, but they actually got some um, doctors and they had got the what they call them psychologists, psychiatrists, whatever the people that, that do your mind stuff. They got them inside there and they were like, yeah, dude, he he he's good. Like he can stand he can stand trial. And so yeah, he has life without the possibility of parole at this point in time. And y'all, they just decided that like in 2022. Because this happened in 2019. So in 2022, that's when they decided that he was actually, um, you know, mentally fit to stay in trial. And he, yeah, craziness. Craziness. Uh, so now to, all right. So the husband, his husband that left in, um, in uh, 2019, well, September of 2019. This happened in 2019. But his husband that left. When they started asking him questions, they was like, yo, did you know anything about this? The husband was like, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about it. Like, he was not like that when we were together. He was just a cheater. But I would have never feared for my life. This literally, and I will show y'all this when I do my YouTube video. But I'm serious. That's what the husband was telling them. He was like, I, like you, if you would have asked me a few months ago, would he have killed somebody and ate their nuts? I would have told you you're crazy. But you know what, Nikki Nicole, Nikki underscore Nicole, we say he knew that's what a big problem was with the police was they were thinking there ain't no way that he was crazy or was capable of killing someone and eating their nuts. And you had no idea. Y'all want to know what I believe? I believe that the, they had done this before. I believe it. I believe that the husband either had was in on some of this stuff. He probably didn't want to be. Or he at least knew about something that was going on. That's what I believe. Because how you leave your husband and two months later, he got someone hanging upside down in the basement with no nuts. How? How do you? How does that happen? I'm the, he knew about it. Mark knew about it. And I'm sorry, Mark, if you're seeing this, but I... I not, not Mark. What's your name? What's the other name? Jamie. Jamie knew about this. I'm sorry, Jamie. If you, you know, if you're seeing this, but I, I thoroughly do not believe that you did not know or did not see any signs that this is going to happen. I just, there is no possible way. There is no possible way that you're going to sit there and tell me that your husband was capable of, 
of, of, of keeping people in basements. He kept them in basements, y'all. They were chained up in ba and the police. How the hell two people call y'all and tell y'all they were chained up in the basement? <laughs> and y'all didn't file any charges. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. If I didn't tell y'all where this was, because I really don't think I said it this time. This was in Shiawassee. This is in Michigan. Shiawassee? 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 I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Shiawassee. But yeah, it's crazy as hell that he... So for those of y'all who are just jumping in, a very brief recap. He was married to a dude... The dude left him in September of 2019 because he was cheating on him and had people in bed and tried to get his husband to join in on him cheating. Husband left in September. The immediately following the next month in October, he had someone handcuffed in his basement. They escaped, called the police. The police did nothing. In October of the next month following that, there was another man that was also handcuffed in the basement, also escaped ran to the neighbor's house. The neighbor called the police. Once again, the police did nothing. The month after that, he got with 25-year-old uh, Kevin Bacon over here, which his name is Kevin Bacon. He got with 25-year-old Kevin Bacon, and he's 52, by the way, and uh, lured Kevin Bacon to his house. Apparently, when Kevin Bacon got there, he strung him up. He got a, a, a sharp object, did this to the neck, and also stabbed him in the back and then chopped his nuts off. Chopped his nuts off and then ate him. Well, ate the nuts. Fried him. Deep fried him, by the way. Deep fried the nuts. I'm I'm not sure if he seasoned them. You know, he does not look like... Actually, he looks like he probably does use a little season. I don't know. I, I would give him some slap your mama. Or there's probably like some Louisiana and season probably like hot damn that's hot i feel like he would use something like that to eat but i'm not sure but he he got the man's he got um kevin bacon's um uh, testicles ate them and then you know was planning on using his muscles for beef jerky that is so sad for kevin bacon so sad that this man went through that and he was 25 years old y'all 25 years old he has so much life to live so obviously because of his name. Thank you, Christina, for that heart. And thank y'all for liking this. I really do appreciate all the likes. Um, but obviously, because of his name, the celebrity Kevin Bacon, which we all know Kevin Bacon. What was he the one on? Um, oh, what? Not Footloose. What did Kevin Bacon been on? I don't know. But we know Kevin Bacon. The, the actual Kevin Bacon that is a celebrity, he made a post, and I believe it was on Instagram. He was talking about uh, this guy right here. And he was like, condolences to the family, you know, because they lost uh, they lost their son for something that was so crazy. Kevin Bacon, you know, that's, that's really sad. It's, it sucks. It truly sucks. And, you know, this guy is going to, he's thank God he's locked up. He's going to jail. He's not getting ever getting out. Like, it's done. It's, it's a wrap. It is crazy truly a rap for this guy right here but the fact that the police got got in over it one of the families i told you i was gonna come back to one of the families actually was on uh, looking to file a lawsuit because like they came out it was like if they were if there was a woman that said this you know they said that they were chained up in the basement y'all would have took it more seriously and, and honestly i do believe that if it was a, a woman if it, if it was even a straight man, they probably would have took him more seriously. But because they were both homosexual, the police were like, eh, you know, gay people being gay. Let them do whatever they want to do. We don't want to get in the middle of that. But anyway, that is the first story. I have, I'm about to do another story. And I told y'all, if y'all came back, that I was going to have another story for you guys. And I'm going to make good on that, um, that word right there. Um, so the next story is, is actually kind of, is not a, a murder story. It's an attempted murder story. Let me say that it is an attempted murder story, but the next story is about this dude named, um, Charles Bishop. I actually found out about him on Twitter. Now, Charles is, is a little stupid. Before I get into it, I'm going to take just a couple sec, uh, about a minute. I'm going to let y'all... Y'all don't need breaks, because 
I'm y'all looking at your phone, so I guess you can piss while I'm on the. I mean, if you're pissing, don't tell me. Or if you're shitting, don't tell me either. But I mean, you don't you don't need a break. A break for what? I'm here. Anyway, oh, you can refill. You can you can refill while I'm talking. What am I talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. Let me just go ahead and keep going. So anyway, the next story that we're talking about is about Charles Bishop. Now, to, before we talk about Charles Bishop, I have to talk about an event that happened before the actual event. I'm going to ask y'all this question, and if y'all do not answer it correctly, I promise you I'm going to report you to the INS. What happened on September the 11th, 2001? All right. Okay. All right. I see y'all answering correctly. Somebody said I skipped school. What? Okay. <laughs> Some of y'all scaring me, but okay. 9-11. Okay, yes. September the 11th is 9-11. It's, it's whatever. It's what it is. I, I'll let you guys know I do not have a picture of Charles. However... Y'all know I've been talking about for months that I was going to do the, the, the dumb ways to die or the, the dumbest deaths or whatever. You're going to see this story pop up on TikTok. And the reason being is that I do appreciate, you know, there's 1,000 of you here right now. But, you know, I have 300,000 followers. So there's like 299,000 of you guys that won't see this. So I want everyone to be able to, to, to get this, okay? So I'm going to do a TikTok video about it. But I want to talk about it with you guys. So, September the 11th, 2001. I'm going to go over just a couple of brief facts about September the 11th. Because some of the stuff I didn't even realize. Because we know that there was the bombing on, well, the plane attacks on the Twin Towers. But did y'all know there was two other attempts outside of the Twin Towers? There was a total of four planes. I had no idea. Now, I heard about a third plane. Oh, thank you for that. No cap. But I had no idea about the two extra planes. There was two extra. Okay, so September the 11th, 2001. All right, class. Ready for a little history lesson. So, the first impact was from American Airlines Flight 11. It was driven by Mohammed Atta, or Atta, I'm not sure how you pronounce him. But he flew into the North Tower at 8.46 a.m. That was the North you know, Tower in Manhattan, New York. Okay? Now, a few minutes after that, the United Airlines Flight 175 hit the South Tower at 9.03 a.m. So you have 8.46 a.m., one plane flew into one tower. At 9.03 a.m., Another plane flew into the South Tower, okay? So there's two towers. Those are the, 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 the famous airplanes that we see all over the news. If you look up 9-11, that's all you're going to see. However, many people do not know. Like I said, I did not know. On um, A few minutes after that, on another plane, the American Airlines Flight 77, hit the Pentagon, connected Boom! Into the Pentagon at 9.37 a.m. So you have two planes that went into the Twin Towers. And then you had another plane that went into the Pentagon. And then there was a fourth plane. A fourth. I, like I told y'all, I learned about the Pentagon a few years ago. I learned about this. And we got somebody, how do I not know? I, they didn't teach us in school. How the hell was I supposed to know? I didn't know. All I was ever told was the Twin Towers. I'm 30 years old. I literally learned about the Pentagon like three, four years ago. I literally had no no concept there was another plane. So, yeah, another plane flew into the Pentagon at 9.37 a.m. There was a fourth plane, United Airlines Flight 93. Now, the people on this fourth plane, they weren't going for it. Those are the real motherfucking Americans of the motherfucking United motherfucking states of motherfucking America. I'm oh, sorry, it's political. Those are the real patriots. Because they got up on there and they said, mother. <laughs> they, told, they was like, we ain't going. We not going. Now, it is unclear 
if the fourth plane, it is unclear if that fourth plane was planning to hit the White House or just hit somewhere else in the U.S. Capitol, but it was heading in that direction. And they're just assuming that it was going to stop cursing. Fook, your name is Fook You. How you gonna tell me to stop cursing? But you know what? You're right. I, I do need to stop cursing. I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Fook You. So anyway, the uh, <laughs> so anyway, they don't. It's unsure if they were going if, if it's unsure if they were heading to the White House or if they were heading to to hit something else. But they were heading in general direction. Now the passengers hemmed up on them bitches. They was like, "Ain't no way, the White House. We could take them two towers out, but we ain't hitting the White House." So the passengers revolted, and the plane nosedive. It nosedive into Stony Creek Township Field in Shanksville at 10:03 a.m. Though every last one of them people, everybody that was on that plane. All they descendants need to be taken care of. They don't need to be paying taxes. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Whoever was on that plane, they children, all the way down to their great-grandchildren should not have to pay taxes. Ever. Ever. And I mean that from the bottom of my ball sack. None of them should ever have to pay taxes. Like, those, those are national heroes. Those are national heroes. Like, I'm being for real, for real. But anyway, now, now we are past the, the bombing. So all this happened. That was crazy. Like I said, I had no idea about that fourth plane. I learned about the third plane a few years ago. And of course, we all knew about the first two planes because those were the major. No one, I, I don't I don't want to say no one cares about the Pentagon, but I mean, like, I never knew anything about the Pentagon. I just never knew. No one, none of my history teachers ever said anything about that. I remember in school when it happened, they pulled out the TV and they showed us the newscast and all we saw were the Twin Towers. I, I didn't see anything else, so I, I literally just did not know. But anyway, so now we're past this, right? Now, we get to this dude, this bitch named Charles Bishop. Charles, and I wish I could put his picture up. You know what? I got an iPad. I'm going to pull up on my iPad. So Charles Bishop... When I tell you this dude is a bitch. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, wait. Do y'all see him? Can y'all see Charles Bishop? Do y'all see him? This is the guy we're talking about. That's the guy we're talking about. Yeah. Charles Bishop, he, when the Twin Towers, you know, attacked, and Al Qaeda and Osama bin Laden was doing all that stuff. He was getting his rocks off. He was like, oh my gosh, I want to be one of those bitches. So, Charles, oh my gosh. So, Charles, he already was taking classes. He was already taking classes with a flight instructor. So, he was learning how to fly a plane. Yo, this dude is such a bitch that he got up there. And in his mind, I want to do it too. Why? Why are the Al Qaeda the only people that can run into a building? I, I want to do it. So Charles, he wrote. Charles wrote <laughs> what they called a uh, a possible suicide. I don't want to say it because I'm scared because you know how TikTok is. But a possible off yourself letter. I'm gonna read you what this letter says, and I oh I wish I would have I wish I would have brought my wig. Well, my wig is over there, but I just don't feel like getting up. But he all right. So y'all ready? I'm about to read you the his manifesto, his little suicide letter. And he goes, I have prepared this statement in regards to the acts I'm about to commit. First of all, Osama bin Laden is. <laughs> First of all. Oh, some y'all want me to get the wig? We need visuals. All right, all right, stay here, stay here. I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing it. Okay. Oh, oh wait. All right, 
So <laughs> Hi dudes. My name's Kyle. <laughs> talk to any manager with this thing on. Fuck <laughs> let me talk to your manager. <laughs> I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Dollar Tree and be like, hey. I'm gonna just walk in and be like, where's your manager? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, let me go ahead and get into it. Woo! Alright. Alright, let me start over. Here is his manifesto, okay? I have prepared this statement in regards to the acts I'm about to commit. First of all, Osama bin Laden is absolutely justified in the terror he has caused on 9-11. He has brought a mighty nation to its knees. God bless him. And, and the others who helped make September the 11th happen. The U.S. will have to face the consequences for its horrific actions against the Palestinian people and Iraqi by its allegiance with the monstrous Israelis who want nothing short of world domination. You will pay. God help you and I will make you pay. There will be more coming. Al-Qaeda and other organizations have met with me several times to discuss options of me joining. I didn't. This is an operation done by me and me only. I had no other help, although I am acting on their behalf. Insane. <laughs> That's what he wrote. That's what he wrote. He wrote this. Yo, he literally wrote this. And so he he wrote it, put it in his pocket, and he, he got ready. So on January the 5th, 2002. Now, also, 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 let me let me go ahead and, and, and go ahead and say, even though he said in this note that he was working with Al-Qaeda and doing all those stuff, this was never proven. Period. It was never proven. So at the end, it was come down to the fact that either, either it was just a, an suicide note, an off yourself note, or if he was just some kid, instead of doing a, a, a school shooting, just decided to do this. But on January the 5th, 2002, he had flight classes with his instructor. His instructor had him doing the pre-flight uh, checkup on the plane. And so while he was doing the uh, the pre-flight and checkup and inspection or whatever, the instructor actually stepped away from the plane. He walked away for a little bit. Now this dude, Charles. Let me go back and find you a picture of Charles so y'all can y'all can have an idea of how, who Charles looked like. Because I'm telling you, Charles. This dude here, he gets in the plane while the instructor steps away. He gets in. He cranks it up. And he takes off. Now, immediately, immediately when he took off, the U.S. Coast Guard and the MacDill Air Force Base were notified. I'm not sure exactly how they were notified, but he was notified about this. And Charles was in high school, so I'm not sure exactly what his age was, but he's a little dumb bitch. Now, when the Air Force and MacDill... Um, when the MacDill Air Force Base and the U.S. Coast Guard were notified, they started sending helicopters and people to try to, you know, contact them like, hey, what are you doing? You ain't supposed to be flying out here. You are unauthorized. All this stuff and stuff, whatever's going on. And there was a helicopter from the Coast Guard that kept trying to warn him. I'm guessing they had like a, a speaker or whatever. They were like, hey, stop. You, you, What are you doing? Like, you know, whatever. And he was like, hold on. I should have kept this thing gone. He was like, he told him, fuck you. And he just drove that dog on plane. 
So, he drove it into <laughs> the plane crash into a Bank of America. I'm going to actually show you that picture because I do have that picture I can show you. It crashed into a Bank of America between the 28th and the 29th floor. And the Bank of America building, oh shoot. The Bank of America building has 42 um, floors on it, but this is the scene of the crash. I don't know what damage he was planning on doing with that small plane, because it wasn't a big plane. Y'all, it was literally this. Like, y'all see that, right? It's like one of those personal planes that people just, you know, just whatever. So his goal was to take out people in the, um, the hopes that, he would bring honor and glory to Al Qaeda, I guess. He was the only one who died. <laughs> you idiot! Like, what are you talking about? Didn't even plan it right. He would have done better just by flying into traffic. This man <laughs> just drove into. He just drove into a side of a building. He was, he was the only one. Who died. Where do they do that at? Where do they do that? Like, literally, he would have done better if he just drove into, to the interstate, like, and hit a car or two. No, he decided that he was going to fly into a building. And this was the year after 9-11, by the way. And he died. He hit that. He, he, and he didn't even do that much damage. Like, look at this. Y'all, this is what? $20,000 worth of damage? If that. He did nothing. He did nothing. So insignificant. And so, now you want to know a twist at the end of this story. So, let me let me talk about him, by the way. Let me talk about him. So, I'm going to show you his picture so I can... I need to keep this picture up. So, uh, what's his boy name is? Charles. I'm going to show you this picture so I can keep it up. So, now, Charles. Let, okay. So, Charles here... He was a high school student from Tarpon Springs, Florida. So I'm not sure exactly what high school he was at out there, but that's where he was from. Tarpon Springs, Florida. Now, Charles, as you can see, he's a little a pimply-faced bitch. Y'all ever seen that little girl talk to that dude? She's like, and there's a little pimply-faced little bitch. That's what he was. He was a pimply-faced guy. And because of this, his mom had taken him to a dermatologist. Now, <clears throat> the dermatologist that he took him to had prescribed him this medicine called Accutane. Now, Accutane had a couple of side effects. And two of those side effects was depression and suicidal tendencies. I'm, what, what pimple medicine makes you want to kill yourself? What do they put inside of a pimple medicine? If you don't go and get some doggone what is it, Maybelline? Or what's what's that stuff that you, B.R.A. that you wash your face with? What are you talking about? You're right. I got to watch my words because I know the second I said it, somebody probably going to flag me. But apparently, this medicine makes you, uh, makes you want to do things that are not good for yourself. And so, yeah. The mom actually, she filed a lawsuit. The mom actually, she filed a lawsuit against the actual pharmaceutical. Oh, excuse me. The pharmaceutical company who's under Roche Laboratories or Roche. Maybe it's Roche. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Laboratories for $70 million. For $70 million. She went after this company for $70 million. Now, the trial went on so long that in 2007, the mom was like, you know what? I can't even afford my lawyers. So, yeah. So, in 2007, she dropped the lawsuit because she couldn't afford to even keep going with that. So, it's crazy. It's really crazy. And, um, yeah, that is the story of Charles J. Bishop. The guy who... Flew a plane into the side of a building. Alu Akbar. All I can say, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. That is the second story, you guys.
I have been on here for an, a little over an hour. I've been on here for a little over an hour. I appreciate you guys. It has been fun. Do another. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to leave just yet. I'm going to be here for just a couple minutes, and we're gonna, I'm going to ask some questions. Oh, one thing I do have to ask y'all, as far as the first door, because I did not ask y'all this question. I asked them on the, um, the first live, but I didn't ask you for the first door. So the first door that we talked about today was, oh, goodness, what's this man's name? Mark Latunsky, this guy here. Remember, Mark Latunsky actually led uh, Kevin Bacon to his demise and he ate his testicles now i'm gonna ask you this in a very this is a very serious question i need you guys to you know i know the audience that i have because y'all know me at this point in time i know the audience so i want you guys to really think outside of the box here when i ask you this question A weapon to your head. The grill is lit. The charcoals are hot. The, you cannot choose the weapon. Okay? If you had to eat a part of someone, if, they, if he walked up to you and said, I want you to eat something, what would you eat? I already know what I would eat. And just to make the, I want you to eat a portion of someone. I already, I know that I, I'm going to tell you the sides. I'm going to tell you the sides first. And then you can make your decision. So we discussed it in the earlier live. We have mashed potatoes. They're creamy mashed potatoes. They're red potatoes. They're not russet potatoes. They're creamy red potatoes. We have uh, grilled corn. And we have baked beans. Okay. I had chosen... I had to change my answer, but I had chose ribs. If I had to, you know, it's already said that we taste like pork. I would take a rib. What would you? <laughs> what would y'all eat? And I, this is a serious question. What would you eat? An arm, a leg, fingers. Fingers don't have a whole lot of meat. You can probably eat one real quick. Um, ears. I don't think I can do an ear. If I see it shaped like an ear, I'm probably like, no, no. A kidney. That's kind of big, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, <I'm so> <laughs> a toe. <laughs> Brain. Well, who the hell are you, people? A tenderloin. Heart. Come on. I think the safest thing, I see someone said a toe, a finger. Why does everybody keep saying a lip? I couldn't eat a lip. If I see something that looks like a lip, I wouldn't be able to eat it. But I'm saying, like literally, we're looking in a scenario in the universe where you have a weapon to your head. And you don't have the option of saying no. You don't have the option of saying no. Like, I want y'all to get no out of your head in this scenario. You're in my world now. An eyeball... Can I eat a piece of hair? You know what? That is a good question because someone said they were a vegetarian and I suggested eating the hair. Is it raw? No, it's not raw. The grill is on. So it's going to be put on the grill. It's going to be seasoned and everything. The seasonings are going to be, we have Slappy Mama. We have garlic powder. We have onion powder. We have, oh, what was the other thing that I had? Paprika uh, and seasoned salt. So it's going to be seasoned. Is the hair washed? As is, not washed. Um, nuts? Oh my gosh. <laughs> rib, final answer. I you know, I stuck with a rib. I think I would I, I think I would take a rib. Because if I think is if I see a finger, I'm not gonna be able to eat it. I thought about it at first, and my first answer actually was a hand, but then I thought about it, and like I was like, if I see a hand, I'm not gonna be able to eat a hand. But if I see a rib, I can I can fool myself. Spleen. What I just come into, Tanya? Welcome to the. 
Welcome to the live. Uh, honestly, I'm good with checking out. A lot of people are. A lot of people are. A uh, finger cover and mashed potatoes. I don't think I can see it. I wait. I don't have a spleen, so good luck trying to eat that. <laughs> We're not talking about you. We're talking about somebody else. Somebody from the earlier live. They was like, you can. Uh, we can eat my ex. I'm like, I mean, I I wasn't saying it about in particular, but they they suggested their ex. What about a liver? Why do I keep seeing so many livers? Why do y'all want grilled liver? I mean, I know liver has a a, a, a taste to it. It's a, a, a taste. Are they deboned? If it's a rib, no, it's gonna have a bone in it. Um, calf. Someone said calf. I said no to calf. I think a calf is gonna be a little hard. I would not eat a calf. It just seemed like a tough meat. I think calf. Um, but, and depending on the person, like, pec muscles, they, and, 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 well, maybe not arm muscles, but pec muscles, they just seem like they'll be too hard to eat. Um, I'm a picky eater. Hmm. Ankle. That's not a bad choice. I'll take a wing. A wing or what? I have to be, all right, you guys. All right, you guys. I'm about to get <laughs> It's been fun. I it has been fun. I have enjoyed every last one of you guys. <laughs> I've enjoyed every last one of you guys. Uh thank you for being here. I appreciate all the likes, all the support. Oh, the the next um the next game show. The date has been set. So it is if I'm correct, I believe it's the 17th. Because next week is going to be the 11th. This Super Bowl. I'm not doing it on Super Bowl. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to go live on a Super Bowl. Just because it's a... I mean, it's a Super Bowl. But the week after that, it's going to be the game show. So what that does mean is next week, you guys are going to receive... You're going to see a video. If you do not... If it does not pop up on your screen, make sure you guys check my page. I'm going to have a video up. The video is going to tell you how you can put your name in for the drawing. To be on the game show. For those of y'all who have no idea what I'm talking about. The game show I'm going to pick someone who can go live. First of all you have to make sure that your account can go live. Because that's something I realized. I found out last time. If you can't go live. there's, I mean, You won't be able to participate I don't think. So make sure that your account can go live. Um, also you have to have either Cash App or PayPal. So whenever the game show is done. Whatever your winnings are. I'll be able to send that money to you. And now for the game show, it's going to be 20 questions, $5 a question. Okay? $5 a question. So that means if whoever is chosen answers all the question, you can walk away with $100. Free money or $5 if you don't know any answers. I'm going to be pulling from any of the videos that I have done, period. And I know I've been doing videos since the end of 2022. I didn't do that, that many in 2022. And it's only going to be the videos where I talk about um, more of the story formats. Not the live updates type videos. Not the the random videos. None of the, the Twitter videos. Nothing of that nature. It's strictly going to be the videos where I talk about true crime. It's going to be 20 questions. It's going to be $100 for the grand prize. I Actually, depending on how I feel, I may throw in an extra money for like a bonus round. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. But definitely, there's $100 there. Uh, so, next week, if you if it doesn't come across your screen, make sure you guys make a point to come to my page. I'm going to put the video out next Sunday. Even though I'm not planning on going live next Sunday, I'm going to make a video that's going to be on TikTok next Sunday showing you guys how you guys can participate. Because I want to be uh, drawing the winner. Uh, I want to say either somewhere between Wednesday and Friday. I may pick the winner on Friday. I'm not entirely sure. I may do it on Wednesday just to make sure I get time to correlate back and forth. But next Sunday, I'm going to be doing that. If you're on the show, I'm going to contact you. I want to be choosing up to three people to make sure that I have backups. So in case one person can't, the next person jumps in. If they can't, the next person jump in. If three people can't do it, then I don't know what to tell you. But, um, yeah, uh, I, <laughs> Renee Love, can you have Cliff Notes? I don't care what you do, but I'm going to, it's going to be 20 questions. You're going to have a certain time from the answer them. And 
Well, actually, you can't Google. I'm not going to let you Google stuff. But just make sure you guys watch, you know, watch the vids. Um, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Uh, I love you guys. Keep out for that. Um, I love it. That's it. I don't know what else to say. Y'all have a good one. Uh, and good night. Be safe. Peace out. Wait, how you get this thing, y'all?